I think this evening will really epitomise everything that uh, Earthwatch stands for and certainly all the things that make me very proud to be associated with it. Um, this evening we are focusing on Earthwatch's five-year forest research programme. We're going to be looking Hello, I'm Kate Humble and I'm here at the Royal Geographical Society. Now, you may be able to hear that there's a bit of a hubbub going on behind me. Well, uh, people are coming in for tonight's Earthwatch lecture, which is on climate change and forests. And with me this evening are Dr. Dan Beber from Earthwatch, uh, Professor Yadvinda Mali, who is from Oxford University, and Professor Ravindranath of the Indian Institute of Science. Good evening to all three of you. Thank you for being with us this evening. These gentlemen have all been undertaking a five-year research program into the impacts of climate change on forests. Now, this immensely important research has been funded by the HSBC Climate Partnership. Uh, they are going to be taking to the stage tonight to tell a packed house some of the results of this research. But um, before they do, I'm going to get a little sneak preview from them of what they found out. And Yudvinda, I think maybe we should start by uh, just giving something of an overview. How important are forests? Well, three quarters of all the types of living organisms, species on planet Earth, live inside forests. Mm -hmm. So they're huge reservoirs of our global biodiversity. And they provide numerous benefits for people who use forests and live in them. But in terms of climate, the topic tonight, they provide a number of services. They store vast amounts of carbon. There's three times as much carbon in vegetation and soils in forests than there is in the atmosphere. So whether the forests are absorbing or releasing carbon has a huge influence on, on, on the atmosphere. They also in influence the climate in many other ways by uh, taking water up from the soil and releasing it to the atmosphere. They cool the local surface, they cool the local climate, and they also form clouds. That, that waterfall goes up and forms clouds, which reflect light into space and can generate rainfall further downstream. So forests play a significant role in many aspects of, of our global climate. Uh, very significant indeed, by the sounds of things. Dan, um, you were overseeing this uh, global experiment and you will be presenting some of the results of this research tonight. Um, can you summarise the aims of the programme and the key outcomes of the research? You know, just in a couple of words, your five years yeah, of work. <laughs> in a couple of words. Well, first of all, I'd like to say uh, that um, it, was, it was a great privilege to work with our colleagues in Oxford University, uh, in the Indian Institute of Sciences, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, uh, an NGO, SPVS in Brazil, and uh, the Smithsonian Institute in the, U in the USA. So it was a truly global project, and presumably yes. it has to be. Presumably that was important. You didn't just pick one area of forest in, on the planet. No, I mean, the, what was interesting about the, the, the topic that we were studying, the effect of climate variability on, on forest, was, was to look at how human activities that have disturbed forests are affecting that interaction between forest and climate. Globally, more than two-thirds of forests have been impacted by people in some way, and that can go, that's from, from logging all the way through to low-level use, extraction of, of, of uh, firewood and that type of thing. And when people interact and use forests and, and disturb them, that affects how climate will, will affect um, forest carbon storage, as Yadvinda mentioned. Ravi, you led uh, the research programme in India. Um, there's been a huge amount of research already undertaken in India, I understand. Um, this data that you have added to, um, how will it be used? Are you not in danger of kind of being bogged down by data? Um, can it actually be put to a practical use uh, to find a solution to the problems that Dan has outlined? It's true that uh, currently we know uh, forests are already being impacted by climate change. Mm -hmm. Forests are responding to climate change very often in an adverse way. But there are very few studies in the tropical world in trying to understand how forests are responding to climate change. Mm -hmm. Like there are few studies, very good studies in Europe. So this is one of the first studies I would say where we set up uh, a large number of permanent long-term monitoring plots mm -hmm. where firstly we try to understand what's the current status of vegetation, 
what are the dependencies of, of on the forest by the local communities and what's the type of biodiversity that exists so that this data becomes some sort of a benchmark or a baseline for future studies they can compare after 10 years 20 years how the species assemblage species mix has changed mm -hmm. regeneration rates have changed number one number two communities are using the forest in the western Ghats. it's mm -hmm. one of the biodiversity hotspots of the world so we wanted to understand how community dependence impacts biodiversity carbon stock in the forest so this helps us to really in modeling climate change impacts on the one hand on the other hand to help communities to manage forest better I mean that's a very key thing isn't it because you know for as long as human beings have been on the earth they have used forests unfortunately forests are a magnificent resource as far as human beings are concerned um, the research that you're starting to see at Vinda, you know you, you 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 know the importance we all know the importance of forests realistically though um, do you think there is anything that can be done to kind of balance out the importance of forests to climate but also the importance of forests to human beings one of the challenges we've always faced is that many people realize that forests are immensely valuable, but directly putting a numerical financial value on that that could be put against having a field there mm. or a cash crop has been, been a challenge. And climate change, uh, as well as being a threat to forests, has in some strange way also been an opportunity for forests because one aspect of forests that can be valued is the carbon content. That carbon has a price mm. on international markets. And, uh, because of that, uh, there suddenly is a real dollar value which could be ascribed to forests. And it doesn't mean that's the only value. The real value is much greater than that. But here, for the first time, there is money that industries or companies or governments are willing to put in to conservation of, of forests because of the climate services they provide and the tool that they can be as, as one tool towards tackling and mitigating climate change. So there is a, there's an opportunity there as well. And presumably that's something that Earthwatch can use, Dan, to go in and, and this research, as you say, if, if you can put a, a, a true monetary value mm -hmm. on forests, um, that's a very persuasive argument then for governments to protect them. Well, we hope so. And I think you know, there are two aspects. One is that of all the components of the global, global carbon cycle, the the, the forest component is the least well known and as Jan Vinder will show later is the most variable in the way that you know, vegetation is taking up and releasing carbon. Mm. So we need much more scientific study to really be able to quantify how much forests are worth um, and, and thereby um, make them a, a safe investment. So the science has a real role to play in that. The great thing I, uh, I understand about the funding uh, from H HSBC is that it wasn't just a cheque and you were kind of left to your own devices. This was a citizen science programme on a grand scale. I mean, Yudvinda, how was it working with these, these kind of amateurs, if you like, these amateur scientists who wanted to come in and see what you were actually doing? Check you out. Is that HSBC money being well spent? <laughs> Uh, there was immense uh, enthusiasm, uh, uh, immense range of characters, uh, challenges with that as well, but uh, the, there was a huge enthusiasm in the field and it was impressive how many people came away with a deeper understanding, a deeper appreciation of the issues and the subtleties around climate and mm -hmm. forests and mm -hmm. went back into their, their, their regular day jobs with that perspective and, were, and part of the mission was to go back into their into uh, their working environment and see how uh, the behaviour in that environment and the c could also be changed uh, to, to, to in terms of climate change impacts. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think, Ravi, that a scientist's job these days, particularly a scientist like yourself, uh, working in a country that has enormous challenges of, of, a, of every type, um, uh, as well as you know, having to deal with climate change, um, is communication um, almost as important as the kind of gathering the data? Yes, indeed. Uh, firstly, we need to generate uh, good, reliable scientific information. Mm -hmm which these climate champions helped us to generate. In fact, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we were initially a little worried. Uh, will we get reliable data from them? Mm -hmm. 
but after uh, they monitored, in fact, our experienced staff went and verified about 10% of the plants. And uh, there was, the error was within the statistically acceptable limits, number one. Number two, I think, uh, firstly, we need to generate information and then communicating information on climate change and its impacts and its implications for you know, economy, local communities, livelihoods is a big challenge. We really need to convince policymakers because climate change, we all know it's slow, it's long term, mm -hmm. irreversible. Mm -hmm. It's not something of great priority for policymakers. So we really need to communicate uh, you know, the implications of climate change in a better way to the public, uh, to citizens, and as far as possible, involve them, the NGOs, the corporate, the college, school students, involve them in monitoring biodiversity, on forest responses, uh, community dependence, so that we can create greater awareness and uh, communicate science better. And that's really at the heart of Earthwatch's mission, isn't it? To, to engage um, anybody that you can that's right. in what the work that you're doing, whether it's on climate change mm. or any other form of conservation. Absolutely. Um, you know, you've, the, the organisation Earthwatch has been doing that for very many years now. Um, have you seen a true positive impact um, through this approach to scientific research? Absolutely. Uh, the, the climate champions, the HSBC volunteers who joined us, all 2,267 of them, uh, were overwhelmingly enthused by the experience that they had. And as Yadavinda mentioned, they have gone back to their business. Uh, they've developed projects which help to reduce the energy and resource impact of the business, and in some cases to a very large degree. Um, and you know, our continuing relationship with HSBC uh, demonstrates that, you know, that the bank sees this as, as value for money, that you know, those, those people who join us, who are taken out of their office, who go out into the natural environment, which you know, we all appreciate because we, you know, we spend a lot of our time uh, working in the field, many people don't have that opportunity. And Earthwatch provides that and then links, links that to professional scientists, but also to you know, a very <coughs> active way of, of educating and engaging people, and, and it, it really does work. And you don't just have to work for HSBC to be able to have that Earthwatch experience? Absolutely not. I mean, over the years, we've had tens of thousands of, of people join us, and you know, through the medium of, of scientific research, which really allows you to get to grips with, with the environmental issues of the day. Um, that, that has been a, a life-changing experience for, for many, many people. Well, I can say that uh, I have been on an Earthwatch project. Um, I went with some HSBC volunteers, and uh, it was an extraordinary experience. Um, gentlemen, thank you all very much for your time. Um, I know you all need to go and put your lipstick on and powder your noses before Pretty this sure. evening's event. Um, I'm looking forward to it very much indeed. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. That has a, it's beneficial to the atmosphere in some way, but this is a